Hey y'all, welcome to Parker's Reefs. On today's episode, we're gonna go check out Henry's absolutely incredible, five month old, mind you, Waterbox Aquarium. All right, thank you for joining me on another episode of Parker's Reefs, and I'm super excited to bring to you yet another amazing tank tour video. Now, if you haven't already seen Ernie's amazing nine foot home reef aquarium, I recommend you check out that video. But on today's episode, we're visiting Henry, who's got a little bit of a smaller tank and it hasn't been running for quite as long. In fact, it's a four foot water box aquarium that's been set up for five months only, but uh, just trust me, when you see the footage, you're not gonna believe it's five months old because Henry has jumped into this hobby like an absolute duck into water and he has got the system absolutely cranking. So I'm super excited to take you there, have a look at all of his beautiful fish and corals and pick the man's brain to see how he gets such amazing results from his aquarium in such a short time frame. So uh, let's jump into it. All right, guys, here we are. We are at Henry's beautiful place, and he's going to take us through this absolutely cranking water box tank. Firstly, thank you so much for having us into your house, and um, thank you so much for showing the viewers this amazing tank you've got. Thank you, Sam. Uh, <laughs> this tank, I think a lot of it has been of your advice as well. Uh, all the time that I've been to the Park Aquarium, as well as asking you on Facebook, so uh, part of the success, definitely you. Oh, you're too kind. You're too kind. There's some stuff I mean we'll get into some of the methodologies that you're tackling on this tank a little bit later because there's some stuff that you're really um you're really uh pioneering and paving the way for some of us uh, in the in the coming uh, months and years which is is pretty cool but um before we get to that t tell us about the tank it's it's a water box it's a water box 130 uh four foot yep standard size uh for 1.2 by 60 by 55 um standard size uh i personally would prefer to put it in setup but we're in apartment, so we're a bit limited. Um, the tank has been running since March, uh, mm -hmm. so we just passed about the five month mark. Five months old. Five month, yeah. Sure, um, not five years. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, we sh uh, I hope this will last um, five months. I really haven't been through the test of time, so to speak, um, but I'm, I'm pretty happy with what it got so far. Um, Absolutely. Mostly it has been LPS dominated, as you can see but I am starting to try some SPS near the top. Yeah, yeah, starting to creep some SPS in yeah, up the top there. Slowly getting the SPS back. <laughs> um, the, the, the tank itself is just running off three LED lights. Uh, I guess I'm probably one of the newer generation reefers that hasn't seen a T5 or metal headlights ever. So <laughs> um, yeah, that makes sense to me. With LEDs, I'm just trying with pure LED. Mm -hmm. um, uh, also got the new reef flare uh, testing there. Uh, yeah. I like the color, I like the greens of it, so I'm testing it out. Yes, yeah, so you got two of the uh, XR15 Gen, yeah, Gen 5 blues, blues um, and you got the reef flare pro medium blue in the middle oh, there. Yeah, that's a long way, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> that's a mouthful. Reef Factor, if you're listening, yeah, come up yeah. with an acronym <laughs> or something. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so yeah, so the XR15 is pretty much cranked to about 100%, uh, and they give really nice par and yeah. nice even coverage. Got a, the filter on. Um, yeah, you got the uh, diffuser, diffuser on them. Yeah, yeah, nice, nice. And you mentioned nice power. R roughly, what sort of power are we talking in the tank? Okay, so, mm, most of the tank is sitting between 150 to 200, Great. with a little bit of about 250 at the top. Yes. Uh, but mostly around 200 mark. So, yes. most LPS are actually around 150 to 200. Nice, nice. That was with the Kessel before then. That was the Kessel, so I haven't yep, yep. this one yet. Yeah, yep, yep, so yeah. It's likely going to be a lot higher. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. Nice. Um, That's case. a nice par value for the, for the LPS you've got in this tank there. That's perfect. Yeah, yeah. Very contrary to uh, a lot of other people's, um, what I've seen on the video as a, as a beginner, people mm. say LPS don't like much par, but then I went to your place. <laughs> Your camera was on the 350-400 part, so I'm like, yeah, I'm safe to go ahead with my... You can definitely, yeah, you can raise it up, but I mean, maybe I should be looking at your par values because the LPS in here are absolutely ridiculous. Oh, thank you. Um, the, the the lights itself um, goes just, I, I do like a flat, uh, I don't do fancy, yeah. um, just ramp up half an hour, ramp down half an hour and about 12 hours yep. straight. Right there with you. No need yeah. for these crazy colored spikes and nuts no. and peaks. And... Well, not for me, I'm not too into that. I don't think um, there's any value in it. Pick a color you like, yeah. run for that most of the day, ramp up, ramp down, happy yeah. days. One of the main reasons for that was my coral used to have, a, well, my lights used to have a long um, 
winding down, but then my coral starts shrinking up really early on in the night. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I didn't like that. Then yep. I realized it was shrinking because the lights were getting dimmer. Yeah, right. So now that I extended it um, to the whole range, the coral don't really close down until the last minute. Um, just, just purely for my aesthetic appreciation. Okay. And that's the lights. That's the lights. Tell us about the, some of the flow you've got in there. I'm just okay. focusing in on this beautiful torch garden now, and I'm just watching the, the gentle pulse back and forth, and then every now and then, just like then, they get a big swoosh. Yeah, that's a little trick I learned from a fellow reefer to keep it on for a, net, a second and keep it off for four seconds. Came in this kind of um, gentle motion, really brings out the best of the euphilias and the fimbrophilias. And in terms of flow, um, it's a mostly LPS tank, so I try not to get too flowy mm -hmm. because a lot of pop polyps we couldn't handle it um, and i've got one main jebel gyre mm -hmm. and two other gel gyre there just for show sure. they actually this was supposed to be an sps tank <laughs> but <laughs> the lps bug bit yeah, yeah. They, and the fish start to take a like into them at night so i just left it in there. <laughs> um so it's the jebel of, airbnb yeah the, the jebel was uh, is fantastic yeah say. Yeah, it's, it's terrific. Uh, very, very powerful. Even with all our, you haven't cleaned it in five months, so. Yeah, wow. Uh, yeah, it still works a treat. Um, and I've got a couple of MP40s mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, to, to create some general flow and a couple of um, Neros to yes. target the flow, especially to create that wave motion because I couldn't figure out how to do, how to edit the uh, off time and on time in the Mobius yes. or the MP. Yep. Maybe just me. Uh, um, yeah, the near I find it a bit easier to control. Yep. Um, so you've gone for multiple sources of gentle flow. Yes, yep. and every the gyre will only comes on every two hours for ten minutes to flush the system. Okay. Then it shuts off. Um, and even with that, I still have some issue with a few torches. The polyps will, the flesh on the side will slowly get blown. Uh, and just from that ten minutes. Yeah, I'm not yeah. sure if it's that or just yeah. other flow, but okay. yeah, um, I, I'm not too sure why. But maybe because the rockscape is fairly open, it's fairly low down, so the yeah, water okay. flow is actually maybe stronger than what would be in, in a more uh, established tank. Sure, um, sure. And, and in terms of the aquascape, the scape uh, is quite heavily influenced by your tank, Scape. <laughs> if you guys have seen his video on his dream tank, um, the island approach and corridors and flows and habitat made a lot of sense. So I um, sure. sort of maybe tried to do my best to put that into a four foot tank. Um, the island, what I realized was that on an approach uh, works better if you don't cram too many corals into it. <laughs> then I realized- I'm And you've never done that here. Uh, no. <laughs> um, yeah, that's the that's the thing with my uh, bad habit of keep buying stuff in when I know I don't have room for it. <laughs> uh, that's when I got a couple of floating islands um, from Vo Vo's Aquarium. He did yes. that, um, and it was really good. Uh, allowed me to spend more money on those, <laughs> which is fantastic. And so I probably added a couple other islands for SPS. Yeah, nice. Around once the experiment happens, um, the scape is all macro rock. I uh, haven't had too much issue with algae. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people say dry rock tend to have a lot of uh, silicon and stuff, but macro rock has so far been working out quite well. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I, the, I do have a lot of morning sun in the summer from the other window in the apartment. Sure. And I realized that they were causing a lot of uh, the uh, diatom, even on yeah. the, uh, most on the side of things. So, yeah, the white light, sunlight does help um, create, cause a lot of that issue. But sure. the tank's pretty settling now. So that's the, uh, uh, the aquascape. Um, yeah, I'm just, just out of room, so. Yeah. <laughs> now, before we go beneath the hood and have a look at the rest of the equipment, you, you mentioned that we are pretty well out of room because um, you're pretty well full of coral and, and probably even fish. Um, you, you've got yeah. decent stocking of both in the tank. Can you run us through? I yeah, mean, sure. we're not going to be able to go through every single coral on the pea in the tank because... Um, you know, I don't know what the time limit is on YouTube, <laughs> but we probably max out at 12 hours, but um, you've got some absolutely stun stunning pieces in there that I'd love to um, spotlight. So um, take us through some of your favorites. Uh, the coral lights, yeah. um, as you might have noticed, I'm a big fan for euphilia and the Fimbriophilia. So Definitely. I've got about 30 hammers and 11, 12 torches in there. Um, and I also love my brain coral. So um, 
brain garden here and the brain garden on the left as well uh just blasto heavy on this side yeah. and an acan and um lobo and patricetta on the other side um the gar I, I just love brain coral um unfortunately they don't like flow or some of them don't even like light but sure somehow they they sort of work life yeah. finds a way yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, in terms of favorite, the hammer in the centerpiece there, um, it's, it's, I don't know if we can call it holy grail, but it is green, green and gold. gold. Yeah. <laughs> it um, is green and gold. Yeah. That's, that's one of my favorite. And this, this little gem. From, yeah. This, uh, this piece down here is shop. absolutely ridiculous. It's yeah. got green, gold, purple, blue. Yeah. It's all sorts happening in that model. I've never seen that before and a uh, quite a lucky find. And Beautiful. I guess thanks to Sam not taking it home every day. <laughs> I and think I have bought a few corals off. This this piece, the hammer next to it, I saw that oh. one in store for a while, I'm sure. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. yeah that's I remember not seeing this piece. Not oh, okay, you said one's very similar. Yeah. Beautiful piece. It would have been. Uh, I, I, I saw quite a few retailers have them, but yeah, some of these little gems are actually, from my experience, not as um, costly yeah. as the other named definitely. variants. Yep, yeah. yep. So definitely. Uh, Check out the local shops that you you see a few gems. For sure, for sure. And uh, there's other corals, uh, but another hammer at the back um, that was like a mottled, that kind of the green slash yellow almost. Big model back there is yeah. absolute um, And yeah, I think that I was at a fish shop and they were unpacking from a monsoon shipment and I <laughs> plucked it out of there. Right, yeah. right place, right time. Yeah. Beautiful. Um, uh, other. Corals, look yeah, like come on. There's got to be a lot more showpieces in here. Look at them all. Look at this big desh just uh, sitting yeah. in the back of you. Tell me that desh is sulking today. Yeah, it's, um, it's sulking. It's, it's the size of my head. It's massive. Yeah, it's uh, usually at least twice as big and uh, with another deshi sitting on top of it. It's like <laughs> yeah, a triple right. mouth desh. Or people call it bounce desh. Um, <laughs> got it off another reefer. Yes. Uh, who was shutting down his tank, so I was really lucky. Um, uh, and I love my dish. I think they just uh, yeah. You got some beautiful dish over here. The texture, some something to do with the texture. I just love a very meaty. Definitely, I yeah, love the favorite. contrast you've got here from the um, solid green, solid red. Got the um, orange. You got the um, another variant of green, and then you got the red and the blue all there. Just yeah. just popping off together. Look a treat. I love it. If I have another two foot of tank, I will probably have another two foot of dish garden. <laughs> two foot of dish. <laughs> You got some pretty nice recordia just uh, chilling in the corner too. Yeah, I try my best to uh, keep a recordia garden, but the prices these days, uh, yeah. yeah, they're not the cheapest coral to fill a tank with. <laughs> <laughs> Very but true. I love them nonetheless, and um, some something to do with their texture. Initially, I thought oh, it's a really um, big miss that we can't get recordias in uh, recordia floridas in Australia, but mm -hmm. eventually the Yuma really grew on me. Yuma definitely uh, yeah. carry their weight, that's for sure. Beautiful yeah. pieces. Um, then the bow bank here is my latest sort of LPS. Um, it's the latest craze. <laughs> yeah, the bowers. Um, then I couldn't fit up there, so there's one lying down the bottom. Um, the something to to do with their fleshiness and mm, in, mm. in the home aquarium they really puff up and they're really they're really amazing and I separate them out because of their aggressive nature yes I separate them out with uh, Zoa Garden so yep. uh, they're not Fight too fire bad. with fire yeah <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah they, they um, a lot of the, my gardens are literally touching each other like the yes. patchy scepter with the um, Sun Arena and the yeah. their sheep I realized that they they will attack them at one stage, but they eventually give up sure. once they couldn't really. And, and San Arena and Deshi are really, really robust. Yeah. yeah they, they can't really eat them. Um, the, so the gardens try to separate them out with sowers here and there. Uh, that's my philosophy. And what about what about this? We, we believe this is a Fabia <laughs> here with an unusual growth pattern. Yeah, that's uh, that's really stood. That's almost like a vertical garden yeah. of a Fabia, like a concrete jungle almost <laughs> and that's <laughs> the reason really caught my eye and uh, um, it, it, it's a lot of these really catching eye pieces are really cheap from the local fish shop so yep, I don't believe yep. in buying based off price tag but based off uh, what I really like that's a good um, way to be yeah and if we and then uh, another cheap example was the OG bounce here. <laughs> Being a hypocrite that I am, <laughs> yes. Um, Nothing wrong with having some high-end pieces as well, and that's um, got to be up there with one of the nicest high-end pieces available. 
beautiful. I tr it, it took me a long time to convince myself I need to get one of those because it's so cliche. <laughs> stuff, but every time I look at it, it's just, just pretty it's nice. It puts a smile on your face every time. It's worth it. Yes. And I imagine that one will put a smile on your face for quite some time. For sure. Um, and some of these uh, button scores yeah. that I scored from this my most recent trip to Reefstock from a WA supplier, uh, Jasper. And they, they're just amazing, the colors on them. Mm. Uh, and I do hear that some of them can grow it's quite big. Like yeah, big yeah. Than a normal scully, scully. Definitely. Um, so I'm quite keen to grow them out. Um, hopefully, yeah, they, they get bigger. And Blasto has been my love from day one. <laughs> Got and, a um, lovely collection of Blasto in yeah, there. Uh, I try to collect them all, but it's like catching Pokemon, it's not possible. <laughs> <laughs> There's always a new variant. They're always making it. new Pokemon, always yeah. finding new blasters. Nah, I thought I was done with the rock, then find another piece, so it's all end up sitting on the sitting on the sand. But I don't think uh, uh, that I heard it's not the best thing to keep your core on the sand. Sure. But um, if you have a if you don't have too many uh, worms, it's not we're not much yeah, for yep. some time. Well, yeah, the real estate issue. Yeah. Well, these things happen. <laughs> these things happen, and you've got a nice torch garden going up on. Up on this rock, torch and a bit of hammer, but yeah, like torch, torch on the front. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the weavy part uh, and the, the, the hammers are a bit weavy hammer too, mm -hmm. so I put them all together. Um, initially, had a lot of issue with torches finding each other okay. because I didn't know, you know when I YouTube something, they're like, I oh, yeah, torches are fine with each other. Yep. They're not. Um, no, there's no. so many different areas of torches we can collect the, the yeah. one and they fight each other. Eventually, I sort of figure it out sure. how to put different types together. Um, so, so far it's working, but I touch wood on that. Yeah. <laughs> Torches I find to be a lot more difficult for a beginner yeah. to keep rather than hammers. Hammers are a lot more resilient. For sure, for sure. Tell us about some of the Goniapora you got down in here too. You got some beautiful pieces in there. Yeah, the Gonies are. I, um, I think from very early on, I was asking Dave in his shop, I'm like, what are these coral? And he was like, yeah, not for you yet. <laughs> um, but, you so know, you waited a month and then you got some? <laughs> yeah, a long time. He made sure that I'm broadcast feeding uh, my sure. tank. Yes. That, and so I keep them, yeah, which is good because they are more delicate. Yeah, I, I realized yeah. that whenever I'm doing some sort of experiment on my tank, which is where once every few weeks. <laughs> <laughs> They, they will soak up. Uh, yeah, yeah, right. Parameters out, they'll soak up first. It's yes. pretty good for indicator coral. Yes. Where, you know, something's not right. Um, but they they, they 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 don't probably get enough flow in my tank. Okay. But unfortunately, with a mixed tank, it's always difficult to keep everybody happy. So they have to make do with what flow I can give them. Yeah. Um, and uh, unfortunately, I haven't been able to score any of the higher end. Um, really? Glow, uh, glitter red and stuff. Oh, some pretty nice ones in there though. Yeah, I'm happy with what, what these are. Absolutely. Um, most of them from other reefers. So, yeah, uh, I think communication between other reefers is quite important. Yeah, absolutely. Some really good stuff. Definitely. And um, not going unnoticed down here, some of these uh, morphs and rhodactus you've got here, you've got some... Uh, Aussie Candy Crushes over there. Got this nice, is that an interstellar? Oh, I don't even know the name. Yeah, <laughs> let, let's go with that. This um, gold and green is crazy. And yeah. then that beautiful red and purple piece behind it. Yeah, gorgeous, they, gorgeous. They're very, very, like, I really like these mushroom in general, not only because they're hardy, mm -hmm. uh, but because they, they just got such a unique color. And you, you think you saw it all, and then you know, there was something new. Um, <laughs> Uh, and initially, uh, like I don't, I, I still couldn't really feed them, so I haven't mastered that part yet. I yep. know some people feed their mushroom and they grow very, very quickly. Yes, but that's I'm still working on that. Sure. Yeah, maybe sure. you can teach me a thing or two about oh. feeding these. <laughs> I, I'm no expert when it comes to mushrooms. I just drop them in the tank, and if they show up, they show up. If they don't, they don't. But um, if I had ones as pretty as that, yeah, they'd be front and center. They're absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, they're, they're really resilient. Uh, I once found one in one of the snail shells that's been sitting upside down in there for a couple months yeah they were still alive they bleached out they're still alive so wow yeah you can't kill them these days <laughs> <laughs> work well amazing now before we move on to the um under the hood and some of the equipment down there we've got to touch on the fish too because you've got a pretty pretty uh, extensive list of fish in in this four foot system and um they're all looking so happy and healthy too so take us through some of uh, your favorite fish or take us through them all if you can okay um most of them are tanned so i've got five tens in there 
I know this might trigger some viewers. Um, <laughs> the four four tank, um, I, I put them in the order that my local fish shop told me to do so sure. in terms of the tameness, so that rest one went in last, uh, which worked out a treat. So I usually had one more, but they start fighting, so saw the other one. Sure. Um, other than the my my favorite is the powder blue, mm-hmm. despite um, the effort of Dave telling me not to get one, still get one. <laughs> Um, when he wasn't in the shop, <laughs> <laughs> it's just so pretty. Even though people keep saying they catch white spots like magnet, but I just couldn't resist the beauty of it. And so He's I had to risk, risk stunning, to healthy example too. Real, yeah. real you know, brown fish. Very, very lucky. Haven't really had a outbreak. I had the one of the first fish I put into the tank, which was a coral beauty somewhere. He had white spots. Yes, um, here he is. I, I, yeah, I bought it at night from another reef I didn't realize. Um, <laughs> yeah, until he'd seen the tank the next day, uh, so it's a good white spot. But um, by overfeeding the fish and everything, they, they, they ride it out. And Yeah, yeah, he looks happy as Larry now. Yeah, very lucky. Uh, other than that, uh, other than tanks, the yellow, the purple, they all got such character. Uh, I came from a freshwater background, and the saltwater fish is just on another level. Yeah, okay. not just in terms of appearance, but their personality, personalities, intellect, yeah. and everything is just um, different. Different. Um, other than the tangs, I really love the tangs, but I couldn't keep any more. It's five tangs, I think, is enough in a four foot. <laughs> There's some, yeah, decent sized units too. Yeah, um, I got the um, fox face. Um, yes. Before I had a yellow tail, I thought I wanted some yellow in a tank, and and the, he's he's been pretty good. Hasn't really started yep. giving out any corals yet. Lovely. Um, I've got a couple of rasses, so the cleaner rass. I've got a leopard rass in there. Yeah, the leopard rass is a, gorgeous. Yeah, it's beautiful. And uh, down there, there's a rainbow. I think it's got rainbow dotty back. Yep. Yep. And it's just really stunning. It's a shame that I turn my lights really blue. Um, um, yeah, they uh, do pop under the white, those oh, guys. Yeah, the white yeah. is so, so brilliant. Um, had a couple of clownfish. One of them unfortunately jumped out when I was trying to net another fish. I didn't realize. Yes. And the other one, the widow, uh, started hosting my torch garden. Okay. And I love my torch garden. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, that's a non negotiable. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that moved on. Um, uh, eventually, but my daughter kept asking, where's Nemo? So, <laughs> Very guilty. <laughs> uh, I think I might need to figure out a way to come back. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, I've also got a. Uh, oh, he's resting in there. I've got a, a marine better, all the way wedged up uh, there. So difficult to show on camera, yeah. but uh, it is in the day, and uh, they are a bit of a uh, nocturnal. Fish. Bit of a nocturnal fish, but that is him up in there. Yeah, it's a. It's such a unique fish. Uh, the first day I saw it. It's almost like a predator version of a gem tag. Yeah. Uh, and the, the marking resembles of like an eel, which was so special. Um, it's the first day I saw that, I knew I was going to get one. Yeah, beautiful um, fish. Even though I had to get rid of my cleaner shrimp, get rid of mm-hmm. my mm-hmm. blood shrimp, I put them all into my nettle tank, uh, and, and he's there. So, um, and uh, it's my second try okay. at, at them. Uh, the first one got some kind of disease. And sure. passed away really quickly, but this one, fingers crossed, well, yeah, we'll carry on. We'll see you on. As well. uh, that's, uh, I've also got some longmouth blenny yes. and a watchman goby somewhere. Yeah, nice. Come out once a month. <laughs> I don't ever see it. Um, uh, what else? I've got abalone in terms of inverts. Sure. Mostly uh, a few. Um, I think I have an abalone somewhere. Mm-hmm, I've got mm-hmm. a uh, black, pure black um, sausage or yep. sea cucumber. It does a tremendous job of cleaning the sand bed. Um, you got a mandarin too, do you? Yes, mandarin. I got ran- uh, yes, I have- <laughs> yes, the mandarin came out. Nice. <laughs> and I have a couple of red dragonettes. Nice. Uh, with the, at the back uh, there. Still um, hanging out. Yes. They, they, oh, yeah, there is too. They are quite utility focused. I think at one stage my tank went through a phase of having lots of banaria. Sure. Um, so these guys, uh, even though they're not supposed to eat them on paper, but somehow it's they're gone. Yeah, um, nice. And I make sure that I have plenty of ports in my tank. Yes. So I'm using a lot of phyto, which mm-hmm. we'll touch on later. Sure. Um, the, most of my fish came from a utility point of view, so I haven't really done anything to buy like an annual fish or 
uh, anything just for the show. One is my tank is, doesn't allow too much, too many more bigger fishes. Mm -hmm. uh, another thing is they, they mine nibble on coral as well. So I just want to keep the tank clean with these mostly utility focused fish. Sure. Um, um, in terms of um, what I feed them with, very simple. Uh, I make my own um, seafood blend, so, sure. so yeah. to speak. And nice. My wife said that's the only time she saw me cooking. <laughs> <laughs> The Cooking for the for the loved yeah. family members. Yeah. Um, uh, the, with this many fishes, there's a caveat is that the nutrient export system has to be really strong. Yes. Uh, otherwise, it, it can go out of whack pretty quickly. Of course. Um, that's probably the biggest challenge of someone who loves fish. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and in, in a limited room. Definitely. Well, speaking of uh, nutrient export, it might be time to uh, pop open that uh, cabinet and show yeah, us sure. what you've got happening um, down below. Okay, the downstairs is where you uh, will witness me trying to overcompensate my lack of skill with equipment. <laughs> I mean, and it's uh, it's it's not laid out like pristinely like like sands, um, but. It's functioning. Yeah, uh, I keep adding stuff and trying stuff out and picking them out. So. Start with the beginning, got a filter roller on it. Of mm -hmm. course, the original sump does not allow me to do that. Sure. Um, so I tried to take the baffle out, but I broke the tank in the, <laughs> in the process. <laughs> so that's um, that's a custom tank by Rob. Sure. Um, uh, filter roller goes in, there's no other me mechanical filtration, um, a lot of filter media. Mm -hmm. So I've got these sinter glass beads uh, from Ben okay. in exotic aquaculture. Yes. Uh, he recommends they, they Ben's have... tanks all run those and he swears yeah, by them and I mean yeah. the results speak for themselves out there. Yeah. So yeah, the results speak for themselves. So that's why I got them. I tried them out. Yes. I've got, um, I learned from my previous tank that I had to get a lot of flow in my sump. So sure. I've got a uh, empty 10 there just for the sump, yeah, uh, nice. which I think helps a lot. Um, and I haven't cleaned the sump. So might be a bit difficult to see, but I want to show what it's like yep. normally. Yep. Um, I've got a great white, I think that's a 12. Okay. Yeah, DC controller, fantastic. Yeah, uh, yeah. Really quiet, does the job. Um, and I've got a couple of algae scrapers. So the, the one at the back is my main um, stay, which is the rain, rain yes, two. Yes, Santa Monica rain yeah, two. Yeah, Santa Monica yep. rain two. Yeah. Um, that's after watching the uh, uh, reef, reef Dude, reef man, reef. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's after recommendation from the YouTube. Sure. Um, and I've got this recently got this new one from uh, Alibaba. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a raised concept where it saves more time, more space efficient. Yeah. For the sump, I want to try it out. It's also what's the same. Before that, I had a um, um, algae reactor. Yes. But the algae reactor, the the design of it. Like the lights will eventually get covered by a layer of um, yeah. algae that kills the kills the yeah. So yeah. that didn't work out really well. But going forward, um, if I could afford a uh, proper refugium, I would have used a refugium. Sure, just it's for the space requirement. Yeah. In terms of other equipment, so that's a nutrient export, yes. mostly the bacteria and the hair algae. Yes. Um, in terms of import, mostly calquasa. Yeah. So at the back. We could still see the legacy Kalkwasa reactor. Yes. Uh, but eventually, like very quickly, my tank um, outgrew the um, evaporation rate of the water. So yes. I had to go with the slurry. And I've been through a few iterations of slurry. So right now, um, the current method is the uh, um, magnetic stirrer in a water pitcher. Mm -hmm. Works a treat so far, um, but I do have other issues at the moment with regards to KH unable to bring that up. So I might have to dose another separate um, KH uh, KH separately. Okay. To bring up the KH. My mag my calcium is currently at about five sixty. Right. Yesterday when I tested it. Uh, and the KH struggles above six. Really? So, yeah, so um, yeah, I'm trying to figure out how where it's leaking on the KH, but yeah, yeah. I haven't figured out why yet, but uh, I, I do need to dose uh, I've got some um, pH razor from the bunnies pool section. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. So they're just uh, sodium carbonate. Um, I'll, I'll dump them in there and you will find a way. Um, so that's the main dosing, but Calquasa only does 
those calcium side do need to those trace elements separately. These are um, core essential, yes. ABC, and the magnesium, another big bucket of magnesium uh, with an LPS tank. Um, it eats a lot of magnesium, so okay. I'm doing about, if I use the normal concentration, I probably need to do about 300 mil per day. Wow. But I think I, I'm doing like a 20 times concentration, okay. so really, really concentrated. Yes. So I have to fill that every few days. Sure. Um, that keep my magnesium at 1500 yes roughly uh, which is the level I want to keep because I've heard that's better for the euphilias sure um, and the trace element um, I was I've been through a few different brands but um, core essential seems to work the best so far yeah nice um, and uh, on top of that the nutrients I do have a little bit of um, carbon dosing okay just vodka in there yes. um, and uh, at the back, that's where all my nutrients are. Yes. It's a lot of phyto, um, core essential CVE plus, mm -hmm. the uh, uh, Reef Revolution um, amino blend, yes. uh, which doesn't require refrigeration, uh, which is great, and a lot of phyto again. So yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm phyto, doing about phyto, phyto. 150 mil of phyto per day in the four, wow. four liter system, yep. uh, which I think um, uh, I'm only doing because I saw one of the videos on. Reef Man's channel where they did a study and Phyto seemed to be the by far the best um, nutrient supplement for your yes. reef tank. So I'm trying that method out. Uh, I do grow my own Phyto, so that makes it a lot easier. Yes. Um, the results I'll probably I'll document, try to document on SPS later on. Yeah. Yeah. So that's most of the stuff. Of course, the UV um, and a couple of doses. I'm not sure where. I, I can't remember <laughs> what else. So much stuff. Yeah. In this <laughs> cabinet, it is jam packed. Yeah. I'm mostly. I'm sure most of my viewers will be the same. They'll be curious on your um, kelp wasser setup because you are dosing an absolutely thick kelp slurry. Yeah. In there. it's um, not just a, a kelp wasser. It's it's a kelp slurry. Yes, it's a kelp slurry, almost a kelp paste. Yeah. Which I did a kelp paste uh, method first, which was using saturated NaCl solution to keep calcium uh, kelp suspended. Yes. So I don't need a stirrer. But what I found out was the normal three millimeter tubing of um, doses heads yes they're not consistent sometimes they block sometimes, yeah yeah so i either spend another 500 dollars on a bigger doser or yep. i just try a different method 60 dollar yep. on a stirrer 60 dollar from uh, amazon or um <laughs> uh, yeah and the water pitcher i found in the kitchen uh, <laughs> that does the job so this is this solution is 10 percent so 10 gram into one liter of water no wow. 100 gram into one liter of water yes which i find to be a quite a sweet spot in between the ability for the magnetic stirrer to keep stirring, yes, and also for the um, dosing heads to not clog up, yeah, right, and the, right. those lines go straight into the MP10 okay. to reduce um, precipitation. Yep. Otherwise, the localized high pH will precipitate a lot of magnesium and calcium. Okay. Um, that's the I top it up. Uh, I'm doing currently doing about a uh, hundred no about 15 grams of calc per day. Okay. So um, that's about uh, half that is going, half of that is calcium. So yep. roughly that's how much growth supposedly my corals are uptaking wow. per day. Um, and which is about three times my otherwise um, usage of calc yes. on my um, calc reactor. Yes. If I was just using the maximum daily evaporation. Yes. Uh, I did try that method. Uh, in, instead of um, going your method, where which you take more water out than you put in, which is fantastic. I don't have the luxury of doing that. Sure. I, I add a fan in there to increase evaporation, but in winter time, and not only drop the temperature a bit too much, mm -hmm. but also mm -hmm. the the heater goes on twenty four seven and yeah, still struggles to keep the. It's not yeah, it's not sustainable. Too many side effect issues. Yeah. So cup salary. It makes a lot of sense yep. to me. Yep. Um, and as a new reefer, I don't have the burden of having a full tank of SPS yeah, and yeah. be really afraid to try things. So I can just try it out uh, in a tank first. Um, and as a result of from the kelp wasi you're running, you're achieving some pretty crazy pH levels in this yes. system. Yes. Yeah? So um, pH, I think at one stage, my pH tops up about 8.9 something. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But today it's going down to about 8.6. Um, mostly because I have to reduce my, uh, it's my, it's always high, high 
PS1 <laughs> in there. Um, mostly because I couldn't up my calc any further yeah. because the uh, calcium has already built up so much. So sure. I need to wait for the consumption to catch up uh, and also need to figure out a way to boost my KH. So it's, it's a long journey. Mm, mm. Um, there's always a new issue coming up even and, and there's not many people with answers, unfortunately. Oh, I haven't found them yet. Yes. So, yeah. No, I think you're definitely one. I'm not saying you're a pioneering on your own, but uh, you, it's definitely not not a well beaten path. You're definitely uh, no, tackling no. this cult slurry, uh, this challenge head on. And um, I know myself and a heap of other viewers out there um, following your progress on uh, the Facebook groups and stuff, and they're always curious to see the latest updates from your uh, kelp well, wasser you. journey. Yes, uh, I'll always let you know if you didn't have to come over and film the tank anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but having said that, uh, after trying cow pasta slurry method for, for a couple of months now, I realized that a lot of things that we were told may not necessarily be true, sure. such as keeping pH, uh, KH stability and stuff, which is, at least from my tank, is not as important. Um, yes. Frequently seeing my KH going up and down 0 0.2, 0 0.3 per day during the uh, testing process mm -hmm. uh, and all the SPS will still have the polyps out. I do have a, a few uh, test frags in the tank sure. for the whole journey. Um, so I think I think there's a lot that we don't know about reef tank, definitely. Um, yeah. So the calc slurry is another approach at reefing, I suppose, uh, and I'm tracing a pH stability, so I try to flatline a pH rather than the KH. Yeah, that's that's, that's something I heard you uh, speaking to another reefer about where um, in the in the oceans that the alkalinity and the pH remain stable. Yeah. And for some reason in our home aquariums, we've decided that the alkalinity needs to remain yeah. stable and the pH can fluctuate. Why did Very we well not put, think yeah. it could have been done the other way? I mean, if you, if you can only pick one, why could it? Why would it have to be alkalinity? Why should it not be pH? Exactly, and that, that's my approach, my whole idea behind calc slurry, and not only because calc has got five or six different benefits all in mm -hmm. one cheap solution, very, very cheap solution. Yeah. Uh, but also it can, it has, it's probably the only solution, a, a strong base uh, solution that's safe in the household. I did consider sodium or potassium hydroxide as well, but they yes. were just too expensive, especially if I have a little one around the house. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's too too much risk. Um, Reef keeping's often a uh, family hobby, and um, <laughs> yeah, we don't need to be bringing in some uh, highly noxious chemicals no, that can no. damage our homes or our family members. Yeah, exactly right. So, yeah, like, like you said before, I'm chasing a pH stability, mm -hmm. um, and uh, we'll see the results probably in, 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 a, in time, in a few months' time, uh, once I figure out how to get the KH up. <laughs> yeah, no, fair enough. That's awesome. Is there anything else uh, you'd like to tell us about the tank or any advice or anything you'd like to give people out there? I think uh, advice-wise, I would say the best thing for reefing, for a new reefer, coming from a new reefer, I have spent hundreds of hours before bought my first reef tank uh, on, on YouTube, on internet in general, and you'll find that this is a hobby where you ask a question to five people, you get six answers. So, <laughs> um, definitely find someone uh, in your area, either be your local fish shop, or in your case, a fish shop 40 kilometers away. Um, <laughs> uh, someone that you, you think you can trust and, and follow their advice uh, because there's so much information out there, it can be paralyzing. Yeah. Uh, so you, if you see, see someone's tank, either in the shop or someone's tank at home, you like it, that means that person has got it working. So just stick with that and yeah. ask them what their opinion is on because there's so much information on the internet that uh, some of them not necessarily to be true and not, not I'm not saying people do it maliciously but it's just the the chemistry and the biology in this is so complex of course yes yeah. still I think it's just scratching the surface of this there's definitely not any one way to run a reef tank That's there's sure. multiple approaches to do it but if you try and combine 30 different steps from 30 different approaches it might not work out so well you're good to find a, a methodology that works and stick with it um, maybe just gently deviate from that here and there but um, yeah trying to tip a bit of this and a bit of that and a bit of this yeah. all into the one system and expecting it to work can be um, you know rolling the dice the wrong way very well said yes uh, and even after I said that I did try quite a few methods myself <laughs> uh, being through that path and then I realized yeah so yeah, stick with one. Um, if you're just beginning, just go with a three part, easy as, and you have to worry about all this technology. Yeah, and a lot of beautiful tanks that have very, very simple setups. Absolutely. 
Absolutely. Well, that's incredible. Well, thank you so much for um, allowing us into your home, uh, putting up a uh, fantastic lunch spread and um, taking us through uh, your tank. I really appreciate it. And um, I know I, for one, will be watching your tank over the coming uh, months and years. And um, hopefully we'll get an invite back to uh, get an update on the tank in the future. For sure. Thank you very much, Sam. Cheers. All right, guys, there you have it. That is the tour of Henry's Waterbox Aquarium. I don't know about you, but I was personally blown away at how far that tank has come in five months. And this is his first reef tank. Can you believe it? The guy has absolutely taken to this hobby so, so well. And I'm super excited to see where this tank goes in the coming months. Plus a little sneak peek. He is actually moving to a new place which will incorporate a custom built, much larger aquarium that um, I've made sure I'm gonna get my foot in the door there so I can lend a hand and also document the process for all you guys at home. So if you don't wanna miss any footage from that, be sure to subscribe. And of course you won't miss out on any other videos on the channel as well. If you did enjoy the video, please do give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments at all for myself or Henry, feel free to pop them in the comment section down below because I do personally reply to each and every comment there. So it is the best way to get hold of me. Other than that, guys, I'm going to leave you to it. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe. Keep reefing. Cheers. Bye.